Hi guys, I want to talk to you today about materials. Um, there's best quality materials and then there's student grade materials. And there's a little bit of stuff in between, but the differences between them I think are neg negligible. So I'm basically going to concentrate on the really low end of the scale and the high end of the scale and give you prices that are what's common in Canada they're different in the states and they may be different depending on whether you're in um, a big city or somewhere where there's not a lot of art supplies available prices will definitely change I'll give you ballparks um, okay so basically you need three things to paint with uh, you need a brush you need some paint and you need paper okay so on the low end you can get fluid paper or Strathmore or Canson. I'm going to throw up some pictures here um, that uh, maybe up in the corner here of some that I don't have but I, I can show you that are around, under $10 anyway. Definitely under $10. The Strathmore, the yellow, the yellow one is probably between four and five dollars. There's this great Canson one that I loved. It's called an XL pad that was just, it was five bucks and it's got like 30 sheets in it. Now, this kind of paper, this is a really good one. It's an affordable one, it's a fluid. I like it because it comes with squares. There's six by six and 12 by 12, really interesting sizes. Um, it's a good paper. And uh, it's archival, but it's not acid free. It's not cotton rag, okay, cotton rag is best quality paper and we'll talk about that in a second. Most other low quality papers are going to be paper pulp. Okay, this is cellulose. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but it's not paper pulp. It's different. Um, most cheap ones are, are mashed paper pulp and they're going to yellow. Okay, this will not yellow as quickly. Anyway, look, it says long life paper. Anyway, it's got long life. This one is also um, gummed on two sides, okay? So this is what's called a block as opposed to a pad. And a pad is just loose leaf. And I have a pad here, I'll show you in a sec. Um, but this is gummed on for on two sides, okay? So it's it's open on the, on the bottom and the other side, but it's gummed on two sides, okay? And that means that you can get it a little bit wet and it's gonna wrinkle, but then it'll pull back mostly flat. Now I find that this is true sometimes. Um, if you get really really super wet what happens is this will peel off and that's to be expected. Okay so the fluids are this is probably about four bucks. Okay four by six it's small it's four dollars. Um, a nine by twelve I'm guesstimating that it's going to be around eight dollars. Okay, 12 by 12 is probably closer to 12 or 14 bucks. Okay, so they're a really good choice. The Strathmores, like I said, are cheaper. They're around five bucks. Um, for best quality pe paper, Arches is a great choice. Um, anything that is cotton rag, okay, it's 100% pure cotton. Um, that is gonna be the way to go for best quality. And what happens is this gives you um, a really nice absorbent surface um, to paint on. Not that absorbent, it's actually got sizing on it, which is glue, which allows your paint to sit on top. But um, this will not yellow, okay? This will stay bright white, except wherever you touch it. Oh, you know what? 50 years, that's gonna be a big yellow mark. Okay, so this is a pad. This is not gummed at all except at the top. This is a pad and um, this you can paint straight on here or you can tear a piece off and tape it onto something like this. This is a mace knife board. This is a thin, stable board that you can tape your paper onto. It will not stop it from wrinkling, but it, um, it gives you a little bit of a stable, a more stable support. I have, actually I'm going to link, I have a, a video about stretching watercolor paper. So we'll link that somewhere around here, somewhere. There's a link. 
gonna be there. If you wanna know how to stretch watercolor paper in the traditional way, and what that allows you to do is really just soak, soak, soak your paper. If you tape it onto here with just regular masking tape, this will hold it down and you can paint on it uh, very basically, but you can't pour, you can't spray, you can't do a lot of really wet stuff, okay? So this pad is a best quality. This is probably about $15. It's nine by 12 and there's 12 sheets. Okay, and that's best quality. Another way to go is um, for a block. This is an arches block and it is gummed on all four sides. Okay, and this is the little spot where you put in your butter knife or your chisel end of your brush and you pull apart your paper but it's gummed on all the other sides and this is what happens when you use it really wet and you spray it it comes away from the base <laughs> okay so this is hot press um, a hot press as opposed to cold press cold press is a little bit of texture on it and it is your standard paper. Most paper that you get to buy the traditional paper is, is cold press paper. I use hot press because I really love watercolor to move. Um, I want to encourage the water to move and the pigments to mix and that works best with hot press paper. Okay, when you're just starting out, get cold press. It's way more forgiving. The paint will not fly around your page as much as it does with hot press. These blocks are probably the most expensive way to get watercolor paper. This um, block itself is probably $18 and it's a 7 by 10 and it's 20 sheets. So 18 bucks, maybe more, maybe 22, $22. Okay, so that's paper. We're we're good, we're good with that, paper's done. Next up, brushes. Let's talk brushes. Um, brushes are basically high and low. Um, there are a whole bunch of in-between, but like I said, I don't see a big difference between the in-between ones. There's a huge difference between the best quality and the worst quality, and then everything in between just kind of smears into the sameness. Now here's the deal with watercolor. This is sable. These three are sable brushes. Um, they are best quality. They are very expensive. This brush, uh, I think, was $140. This is a pure sable brush. It is Kalinsky sable, which is a region in Russia, I think. That And sables are, unfortunately, weasels that, that die to give us their beautiful hairs for our brushes. Um, these are Escoda brushes, which I love, and Series 7 brushes, which I also love, and they're slightly different. Um, if you can see that they're both a number two, but the Escoda on the left hand side has what's called a fatter belly, which means that there is more poof to it and it poofs up more. The Series 7 is slimmer. It's got a slimmer belly, which gives you some more control for delicate work, okay? This one I use for a wash, um, where I wanna put a lot of water and paint onto the page all at once. So these twos are probably gonna be about 10 or $12 a piece. Okay, nylon. Nylon is your go-to. When you're starting, just get nylon brushes. Okay, there's white nylon and gold nylon. Gold nylon, where do I have one? Yes. Here's a gold nylon brush. This is to make you think, oh, it's like sable. It's not like sable, it's just nylon colored, okay? Most nylon brushes that are gold are just colored sable, um, colored nylon. There's no benefit, extra benefit to the gold, except maybe it looks prettier and makes you feel like you're using a sable brush, but it's not, it's just nylon. Nylon doesn't hold as much water as sable brushes, and that's why sable is so much better. 
is sable holds an enormous amount of water. It's a natural fiber and it just sucks up water, which means you can put a lot more paint and water down. And when you're painting, you can fill in more areas with less picking up of more pigment and, and water, okay? So if you're just starting, get white nylon. Okay, don't bother getting sable. There's this sableine color. No reason to do that. Just get white nylon um, and get rounds and flats. Get a flat like this or wider. This is even the super, super cheap choice. This is like, there's a pack of three of these and I got it for like three bucks and I use this to varnish. And there was actually, I was pretty impressed. It's by um, Lowell Cornell and no bristles fell out. And um, so I use this to varnish. You can use this for a really, really cheap flat wash brush. Some people also use um, Chinese and Japanese brushes. I don't know what I've done with this, but I've ruined it. Um, you can use these, they're pony hair or goat hair. And so it's also a natural hair, but it tends to not come into a point. It just comes into a, into a meh. And, uh, and, but it's good for a wash brush. Okay, so that's brushes, 11 minutes. All right, I'm trying to be quick. When it comes to paint, you can start off by using something like Prang or to get a set like Reeves. These I have in tubes. I don't know what happened to my box, but these come in a set of 12. I really pref I like the Reeves. I would promote and suggest the Reeves. I use them in all my kids' classes. Um, they have a split primary and color palette, which means you get a warm and a cold of each of the three primaries. Um, so that's definitely the one that I'd recommend, but you can go for the Prang as well. Um, they come with a, I've never used these. Um, they come with a mixing trays as well. Uh, now these are really, really bright but it's not because they have a lot of pigment in them, okay? They probably have dye, and dye will fade and change color, okay? Artist quality paints are really expensive because they have a lot of pigment in them, okay? This is uh, M. Graham. I also use Winsor Newton, which I'll put right here. Winsor Newton and Holbein. Um, they're, all three are great. Uh, there's really, if it's artist quality, it's good quality paint, generally speaking. Um, M. Graham I really like because they're cheaper than the others and they're just as good quality. Um, because they, M. Graham don't advertise, uh, they tend not to be as popular or as well known, uh, which I guess keeps the price down. So <clears throat> basically, Artist quality is going to give you the most pigment load, okay? And I think I did a pigment load video as well, which I will I'll link here too, okay? So that is your paint. Uh, M. Graham, these run, for this size, the paint's gray. I think this was about $8. This size in Windsor Newton is going to be probably double, closer to $12 or $15. This Reef set of $12 was like 6 bucks. This Prang set was about five or six dollars as well, okay? And they have a single one as well that's just eight colors. Okay, you need two containers of water, okay? So just any kind of container, whether you wanna use like a yogurt container, have two. So one is your dirty water and one is your clean water. You could also get something like this this is my current favorite water container that has three areas. I mix in the middle. Uh, this is my dirty water, and it's actually got a little scrubby, nibbly bit on the bottom that helps me uh, rinse out my brushes. And then these two I use for clean water, okay? Uh, another option is to do use something like this, which I've used a ton, um, and it this is the nibbly bit where you scrub and this is your dirty water and then it gives you four containers of clean waters to choose from. So this has been a um, big fan. I've been a big fan of this one for a long time. 
Okay, palettes. This is your standard palette. This is like 99 cents. This, when it was on sale, was like five bucks. This one was probably eight dollars. This is my palette that I use because I want all the colors. Okay, I think I have a palette video. Oh wait, I made a blog post about the palette, so I'll put the blog post link up here too. Man, that's a lot of links. Okay, the palette, super, super cheap. Um, you don't even need that if you want to put it onto like a meat tray or whatever. That's totally, totally up to you. Okay, so that's materials, that's supplies. Um, I'm going to include a list, a breakdown of how much you can spend side by side, best quality, lowest quality, and the bare minimum that you need to get started, okay? Um, my next video, I'm just going to show you how to activate, okay? So how to activate watercolors. Um, this is for the very, very, very beginner. All right, so that's up next. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.